Today's video is a video I actually recorded about a year ago and it's about four designs I designed for Models Uruguay's UK distributor Rooster Yarns. I designed two summer tops or two tops and two shawls for them. One top is sleeveless, the other one is short sleeve. They're both very summery looking and so are the shawls. Obviously the shawls you can wear any time of year but um, the tops are fairly summery looking so they decided to put off the full release till now. Uh, as we're now going into spring hopefully although it's very cold here at the moment um so i recorded this by a year ago not really knowing when the patterns were going to be released so i say in the video that i thought the patterns would be available through monos the uruguay stockist in the uk i'm not 100 percent sure they will be or not i know they're available from rooster yarns uh ravelry shop and i will leave the link to that below i don't know whether the patterns are available off ravelry um they only mentioned Ravel Ravelry to me when they emailed me to tell me the patterns were available but I will put the link to Rooster's uh, website as well so if you are interested and you can't use or you don't want to use Ravelry you can check that out and if you're not in the UK if you still want to buy the patterns uh, you can do that through Ravelry uh, the patterns are sold by Rooster Yarns not by me um but they are linked in my Ravelry profile page and I'll link them below as well. There are four designs and they use Monos or Uruguay's. Uh, three of them use the Fino yarn, which is four ply fingering weight yarn. And one uses the Marina lace weight yarn, which is gorgeous. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, just ask them below and I'll pop the links to the patterns below. Please note they are Ravelry links. So if you can't use Ravelry, then just be aware of that and I hope you enjoyed this video. Hello and welcome to today's video. My name is Anakin and I design knitting patterns and I teach knitting workshops and I live in the southwest of England. Uh, welcome to today's video. I hope you will enjoy this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider subscribing because it helps me grow my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some new designs that I've designed for um, Monastel Uruguay's uh, UK um, distributor uh, Rooster Yarns uh, and they're all using Monos del Uruguay. Uh, three of them are using Fino and one is using Marina which is a lace weight yarn. This is just going to be a very quick introduction telling you about um, the four designs and also what I think about the yarn. I've used Monos, Monos Yarns for quite a few years. Uh, when I first started designing I had my first pattern published about 15 years ago I think and one of the first patterns I had published in, mag in a magazine probably I think it might have been like the third or fourth pattern I had published in a magazine was Manos Silk Blend which is a DK um, kind of version of the Fino and I really like Silk Blend and for quite a few years that would be my like number one choice my dream yarn to design in and I designed quite a lot of uh, patterns using Silk Blend then as the years went on, I started exploring other yarns in the Manos range and then I did a lot of designs for the previous distributor for Manos in the UK. I did quite a few designs for them over a number of years um, and when they went out of business, 
uh, Manos Yells kind of fell off my radar for a while and I hadn't used them for a while because I discovered loads of other yarns. So one of the yarns I had the pleasure of designing with is the Fino yarn. So I'm just going to look at the labels so I can give you the correct information. So Fino is 70% merino wool, 30% silk. It has 450 meters per 100 gram skein. It is a singles yarn, which means that uh, it's just one single strand twisted together. And it is incredibly soft and silky feeling and just a dream to knit with. I've just used it, I've used it a few times in the past for magazine designs, but it is a few years since I knitted with it. And I'd kind of forgotten how nice it is. And I really enjoyed knitting these designs. Now, my dress form is not perfect. It's a slightly weird shape. <laughs> Everything looks slightly strange on it. This is also a size medium. Um, normally, from when I design for magazines, they tend to have a size 10. Uh, so a size medium would probably be at least one size bigger, if not two sizes bigger than that. So I do like the fact that the samples are a little bit bigger, uh, but it means that they look too big on my dress form, really. So this is the first design I'm going to talk about. Um, it has a lace pattern on the bottom here and then quite a wide lace hem which you can make shallower or what, taller if you want to. Um, the sweater is just worked straight up to the shoulder to the underarm so there's no shaping below the sleeves. Um, so if you want to make this lace pattern longer carry on with it or if you want less lace that's absolutely fine. The front and the back are worked separately and when you get to the um, underarm you cast on stitches along here and then you knit the body and the sleeves up together so there's no sleeve seams or anything here to interrupt the uh, stocking stitch and then it has got a stitch around the um, sleeve edging and around the neckline and also around the hem um, it's got it's got a very simple very clean look very um, comfortable slightly loose fitting uh, perfect I think for both casual and smart wear and I really really want to nip one in my size whether I'll have time to do that I don't know but I really really like it back is the same as the front um, this colorway is called uh, rose water and it is a very very um, lovely pink I actually when I was knitting the edgings onto this sweater the actual sample was knit by one of my lovely sample knitters but when I was knitting the edging on the neckline and the sleeves and doing all the all the finishing, all the sewing up stuff, I was wearing a pair of um, black trousers and um, this colour looked amazing against my black trousers. So I really want to knit myself something in this colourway because I really, really like it. I wear a lot of black, as you can see, so I think this would look great in my wardrobe. So I really want to knit something in that colourway because I really like it. Um, the yarn is gorgeous to knit with. It is perfect for accessories, for garments, for shawls, um, anything really. I, I'm not sure how hard wearing it is, so I wouldn't use it for things like socks, hand warmers, gloves. But that's just my personal opinion. It might be absolutely fine. I haven't tried it for those kind of hard wearing items. But I think for garments and accessories like shawls, scarves, hats, um, that kind of thing, it'd be perfect. So it is hand wash, hand washing cool water and dry flat. Um, so you do need to bear that in mind. So if it's something that's going to get dirty a lot, it might not be the best choice for you. But most things that have wool in them, you probably don't need to wash them as often as you think. When I wear a top like this at the end of every day, I chuck it in the wash. But actually, as long as you have good personal hygiene, you probably don't need to wash things every time you wear them. And certainly something like this, I would not be washing every time I wore it. Um, quite often with wool items, just airing it will actually clean it, unless it actually smells or has stains on it, of course. But don't be put off by the hand washing thing. You just need to hand wash it and then lie it flat to dry. You may want to stretch out the lace pattern a little bit. Um, and then um, it should be fine.
we have the second garment knitted in fino that is um that i've designed uh this is a sleeveless top so you can see no sleeves it's knitted in the round to the underarm and then there's a little bit of shaping at the underarm front and back are knitted flat from the underarm shoulders are joined by working a free needle cast off although you can cast off and the seam it normally if you prefer that there is a let me lift it up there is a lace pattern at the hem and then for the neckline i've actually split this lace pattern in two so i've split each repeat in two and then work two repeats on each half of each side of the neckline so that's one half of the repeat that's the other half and i've done two repeats of those so if, even though this doesn't look the same as the hem it is actually that repeat split in two and then put either this side of the neckline the rest of the sweater is in stocking stitch with garter stitch around the armholes um, the hem and um, around the neckline you're actually working garter stitch um, at the beginning and end of each row as you're working around the neckline so there's no stitches to pick up at the end um, the edging here is finished off as you work in the fronts the two fronts and then at the back but before you finish the back before you cast it for the neck you are actually working a few rows in garter stitch right at the top here so for the neckline there's no picking up stitches and finishing things off afterwards uh, which i quite like so the only thing you have to do to finish this is to join the shoulders and then pick up stitches and knit a few rounds of garter stitch around the edging so this is knitted in fino in the colorway watered silk um and you can see it's absolutely beautiful that's slightly variegated um blue you can see at the bottom here where it's worked in the round you can see the color variation is slightly different than here because here it's worked in the round so the rounds are quite long because you've got stitches for the whole body and then hit from here up it's knitted back and forth so then you've only got half the number of stitches so that's why there is a slight kind of color variation you can kind of um alter that color variation a bit by alter alternating two skeins so when you knit with hand dyed yarn and these yarns don't have a dye lot on them and they all vary slightly so if you have two skeins that look like they vary quite a lot you can actually alternate the two skeins so if you're knitting in the round you could change them every round if you're knitting back and forth you can change them every couple of rounds a couple of rows um and that would kind of like even out any color changes I didn't bother doing that actually one of my sample knitters knitted this and I didn't actually recommend that she did that uh, because the skeins looked fairly simple fairly even to me they looked fairly similar so I didn't think there was any problem but if you have two skeins of hand dyed yarn that are the same colorway but look quite different then that is a good idea if you want to avoid any kind of sharp color changes um you will get some variation with slightly variegated yarns or sub-striping yarns and things like that when you go from knitting in the round to knitting back and forth uh, because you'll obviously have fewer stitches.
look at one of the shawls I designed. This is actually designed in a different yarn. This is not Fino. This is a yarn called Merino. Um, and it is 100% superwash Merino. It's 800 meters or 874 yards per 100 gram skein. Uh, and this is in the colorway Luna, which is a very nice soft gray. This is a triangular pattern with an all over lace pattern. Um, it is knitted from the tip down here and then increase along the sides till you reach the full pattern. And it actually has a slightly different pattern along the edges. So along the two edges there's, there's a slightly different pattern and then it's got a different pattern in the middle. I don't know how easy it is to see that, but the pattern along the edges up here is slightly different to the pattern in the middle. So if you want this slightly shorter, you can just knit until it is the width across the top that you like it to be. And then you can just do a few rows of garter stitch as per the pattern and then cast off. So you don't have to make it as big as it is. This is 100 gram skein, which does give you quite a big shawl. But you can make it smaller. Just increase so you get to the full width that you like. And then you can just work the garter stitch rows and then cast off. Um, I used about probably about 90% of the 100 gram skein and it is quite a nice big shawl. Um, I've just tied it together at the front um, loosely here. You can wear this in different ways. You can wear it um, with the, let me just try and do this. You can wear it with the point at the front as a scarf. You can wear it with the point kind of to the side. And then just fling the ends over. You may want to get a shawl pin if you're going to wear it outside to stop the ends flying off. But you can just wear it across your shoulders um, without fastening it anyway. So loads of different ways to wear it. Really versatile shawl. The merino, um, the merino yarn is really, really lovely and soft. It is a singles yarn, just like the Fino. Uh, but it is really lovely and soft, 100% merino, so it doesn't have the silk that the Fino has, but it feels very similar. You can't tell that it hasn't got silk because it's so incredibly soft, um, and I really enjoyed working with it. One of my sample knitters knitted this. I didn't knit that, but I did knit the swatch for it. One thing I want to say about the Manus yarns is that it is um, a fair trade yarn. It is run by um, a women's cooperative in... Um, Uruguay and they are fairly paid it's providing work for women and it is a really the whole ethos of, of the company is really really good so I really like using their yarns and I'm really excited to have been able to design these four designs this is the final design I want to talk about now you may notice a bit of lack of continuity here I filmed all the other um, designs yesterday because I need to post them today at lunchtime and then I'm actually leaving for a holiday today so I, and this was blocking yesterday when I filmed the other one. So apologies for the lack of continuity. Um, it just couldn't be helped. It was either that or not do anything at all. So I wanted to talk about this design as well. This is a um, asymmetrical shawl. I'll show you more of the shape in a minute. I don't know whether I've got a draped around my dress form in the best way, but I will show you a couple other ways you can do it as well in a minute. Um, the brief for this was to use two mini skein sets. Um, which came with five colours, I think. Hang on. One, two, three, four. Yeah, five colours. Um, so I had two identical mini skein sets and I used the two colours together. So I used both the light greys together, both the... I um, can't remember what all the colours were called. I used, used the two skeins of the same colour together. Because they're uh, hand-dyed, there are differences between the different... Uh, sets so i don't know whether you can see here this blue it's definitely darker at the bottom so what i asked my sample knitter to do was a few rows before she ran out of one mini skein was to actually alternate with the next mini skein for a few rows so do two rows of each for a few rows just to kind of like blend it in so i mean you do get sort of like definite lines of change of color when you're doing the um changing from one color to the other but i didn't want each didn't want the two colours that were the same to have like a big difference in the colour. So um, a few um, rows before you do to finish with one colour, just alternate. So do two rows of one colour, two rows of the other colour, and then just alternate. And then that's a way of blending in um, hand-dyed yarn that uh, vary between the skeins. Because that's quite a common thing with hand-dyed yarn. Very difficult with hand-dyed yarn 
to get two skeins that are exactly identical, even if you dye them together. So a lot of Indian dyes do, for example, batches of five skeins. You can put them all into the dye bath together, but there's always going to be a little tiny variations um, usually. So these, some of these were quite a big variation, which I noticed uh, before I sent it to my sample letter. So I also just to alternate to um, kind of like blend it in. So this is an asymmetrical shade. So let's take it off my dress form. It is using 200 grams. So it is quite big. Um, I think off the top of my head, the Fino is about 450 meters, I think, per 100 grams. So it's about 900 meters in total. Um, although I didn't use all of it. I usually keep like a safety margin of about 10%. So it starts up here with stocking stitch. So the gray section is mostly stocking stitch. And then it blends into lace pattern, which fills the rest of the shawl till you get to the edging down here. Okay, so that's how I would normally wear it. Just bundle up around my neck to wear it as a scarf. Um, and then if I got cold, I might take it off and put it over my shoulders. It is big, it is cozy. Um, Manos Fino is a beautiful yarn, as you can see. It's perfect for shawls and for garments. So soft and you get a really good meterage because it's got 450 meters per 100 gram skein. Um, if you don't want the color variation, you can do this in just two 100 gram skeins as well. It doesn't have to be the mini skein sets. But I quite like the mini skein sets. I like the variation in colour. But you can just do one solid colour or you can choose two colours and stripe it or alternate it. It's up to you. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are new to my channel or you haven't subscribed yet, please consider subscribing. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment and any questions below this video. And also you'll find all the links so where you can find the patterns below this video as well. I do stock some colorways of the Monos Uruguay Fino and Marina on my website. So I will link that below as well. Um, if you want to find the full UK stockist, go to the Rusa website, which I'll link below. And if you live somewhere else in the world, just search for Monos Uruguay. Um, I'm sure you'll find them. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.